first realize that cells beget cells. That is, every cell in existence today came from a parent cell. And that cell came from a cell. And the one before that. And if we were to keep going back, we would go all the way back to one cell that lived about 3 billion years ago. And before that, we would go to the molecules of DNA that weren't enclosed in cells. So three and a half billion years ago, that molecule of DNA did something that has gone on uninterrupted ever since. It encoded instructions deep within itself that passed to its children, who passed it to their children, and to their children's children, and so on. Those instructions have traveled from the very first living organism all the way down through time to you and me. During that journey, as the world changed, the instruction set changed itself and added to itself. And today, it contains within it the traces of every creature visited along that path. Deep within this molecule is important information that we may not really want to know, but know it, we shall. Which one of us will be smart? Or athletic? Or tall? Or beautiful? I know the answer to the beautiful question, and I pay homage to your DNA. Cute. Can we get on with it, please? Play! Which ones of us will get cancer? Or arthritis? Or Alzheimer's? When we have mastered all of its secrets, will parents determine their children's destiny by handpicking their genes? Or perhaps manufacturing new ones? Are we coming to the end of natural selection? in the beginning of guided selection? Each of us begins life as only a single cell. And deep inside that cell, there is a fortress that contains all the genetic information necessary to construct every incredible detail of you. As that cell divides into two cells, and then four, 8, 16, and so on, each and every one of those cells has within its own nucleus an exact, complete copy of those instructions. Every one of the trillions of cells in your body carries your blueprints. So let's take a fantastic voyage into the nucleus of one of your cells in search of your code for life. As we penetrate the outer cell wall, we find ourselves swimming in a viscous material called cytoplasm. And in addition to the nucleus floating in the cytoplasm, we encounter tiny parts of the cell. We pass ribosomes and lysosomes and Golgi and mitochondria on our travel. But our destination is still ahead the very heart of the cell. This is the nucleus. Penetrating the nucleus wall, we encounter 23 pairs of DNA molecules. These are your chromosomes. You have 46 chromosomes and they come in pairs. One chromosome of each pair come from your mother and the other from your father. Other creatures have many different numbers of chromosomes, even though we share many of the same genes. For example, the field horsetail plant has 216. A crayfish has 200. A dog has 78. Humans have 46. 
Mice have 40. A housefly has 12. And a tiny ant has only two. As you can see, the number of chromosomes is not the indication of how complex the organism may be. And while we have different numbers of chromosomes, the total content of those chromosomes is often surprisingly identical. For example, this infant and this mouse have a mutation in the same gene, which results in a similar white patch on the stomach and forehead. Pretty good, Diana. Kevin, are you still with us? Indeed I am, Chaucer. It's all a matter of manipulating the cerebral cortex and some mental focusing tricks, all learned in my childhood back home. Incidentally, where exactly do you call home, Chaucer? Third star on the right and straight on till morning. Diana, what exactly is a chromosome anyway? Each of your chromosomes is a single continuous strand of DNA, one enormous molecule. And as the molecule winds or unwinds, each chromosome can vary in shape, from a stringy open formation, if it is performing a task, to a remarkably tight packed mass, if the cell is preparing to subdivide. This winding is so efficient that it packs three feet of DNA helix into a cell nucleus. This helix is 3.4 angstroms per step. This particular clump of DNA is chromosome 17, magnified some 50,000 times. And as we zoom in, you can begin to make out the rungs on the ladder. Each of these rungs is just one of the three billion ladders that make up the book of our instruction manual. These steps of the DNA ladder are composed of just four different molecules, adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine. And it is common to refer to them by their initials, A, T, C, G. There are two of these base molecules for each step on the ladder, and it is always either A and T together, or G and C together. So if you know one side of the step on the ladder, you automatically know the other side as well. Step by step, and three billion letters long, this is the formula for a human being. The existence of this tiny code written molecule by molecule inside each of our cells is a remarkable discovery all by itself. But scientists have now read that code, examined it letter by letter, and written it down. 